I started this project or a similar one three years ago with Annika and Autumn and uh, so we came a year and a half ago finally and put together a little water purification system and that was nice but the biggest thing was after we did that and we talked to Benson we realized the the number of things that can be done at this school to help bring in crops and bring in money and make everybody happier and healthier here and so once Annika and Autumn graduated I kind of tried to take the lead and, and bring in, help bring in a new crop of students. So my motivation was really to help these students have a great experience, to help this village get something that they really need and really could use, and, well, frankly, to have a little bit of fun, too. <laughs> Saida, I'm a physics professor and I'm here accompanying the team of engineering students to try to do two things. One is to install a solar powered water pumping system uh, on a well that has already been drilled and isn't being used much. And the second is to use the spare electricity from the solar panels to charge up some batteries that they can then use for uh, lighting and charging computers if they wish. Well our original plan a solar powered water pump. Um, they have a well right now and a hand pump in it but uh, the water's not cleaning up and they're not using it very much um, so they're hoping that if we get a solar powered water pump pumping it more often it'll eventually clean up and then it can become more of a source of water and for watering plants and agriculture around here. So now, when you, so now when you pull, you can't pull that oh, one, but you good. pull the other one. But you pull the other one. You pull this one in. Yeah, and it's it small. tightens up. It slips. You learn to work out of your comfort zone. Um, you learn to think on your feet. Um, definitely considering things that you didn't have to before. Um, our, the pump that we were expecting to pull up fell down, and we now have to figure out how to get it out. And, and that's something that I never expected to have presented to me in this sort of real-life problem, and that's just fantastic. Already today, we've encountered uh, a number of engineering challenges uh, that are different from what you would be facing when you have a machine shop full of equipment and you have tools as much as you want. Um, out in the village, you have to try to make do with what you've got. And uh, so we've had a couple of disasters and we've had a hope a couple of rescues and we're in the business now of re uh, reconnaissance to try to figure out uh, what's the level of the pipe that's broken off in the well and do we have enough water above that to install our pump. What, what invention number is this? This is the, God knows, this is the hook of Homo habilis. All right. I think we've got a really good, good group here that works together well and that's going to get a fair amount of work done here. experience with engineering. I, I mean, you know, it's one thing to learn from a book and take a test, but it's a whole other thing to actually go out there and do it. And so when I found out about this project, I was just very excited because it was something where I could get hands-on experience with, you know, for a practical purpose. I mean, water, you know, <laughs> that's a necessity. I like engineering, and what this is doing is pretty much spending six full weeks engineering. But engineering for people. A lot of I feel like a lot of engineers and a lot of um, people in the scientific community get caught up with the numbers and the theory and stuff. But here you could actually see who you're helping and how you're helping them and what people could actually use. You guys have to hold one end on one side and one on the other side. Very complex. Come on. Now show the voltage table. So hold one end on this side and one end on the other side.
I've never been off the North American continent actually, so I really wanted to go and see the world a little bit more. Um, I also wanted to see how my engineering skills, what I've learned so far in my first two years at MUD, um, what they can do for other people, um, how I can help. Um, basically, I'm also in love with, with solar energy, so any application of that is just exactly where I want to be. Well, you get to know the students in a way that you just don't have an opportunity with most students. Um, and I've only just begun. Uh, and they, I think, are seeing a side of me that they certainly wouldn't have seen in the classroom and probably not even if they were working in my lab. Um, because people who work in my lab aren't living with me as well. I'm taking all their meals with me and, and so on. So I told them early on, Look, I don't want you to call me Professor Saida. Uh, that's too much distance. We are a team working on a project, and in some respects, they're going to have better ideas than I will. Let's all just treat each other on a first name basis. Good job, guys. I wish I had brought a better flashlight. Um, I'm actually borrowing one of Rob's because somehow it slipped my mind. Today we definitely could have used some more sort of wrenches and clamps. Well, number one, coming off of the experience today would be a good set of vice grips. I wish I brought poker chips. More hair ties, definitely. <laughs> I went for a run the first morning in Wote and I just came back so like full of life. I love the people, just everyone smiled, said hi, or how are you doing, or good morning as I ran by. And kids were really excited, huge smiles on their face, just everyone seems to be so happy with life here and the pace of life is much slower. I feel like there's a lot more sort of personal connection between people and so it's really, I mean the benefit of a trip like this is you get to experience all that, live, live in a place and really experience the culture rather than just traveling as a tourist. You look at the way we live and the way that the people here live and it's, it's, it's so vastly different and it, there's so much I think coming from Harvey Mudd that we're capable of doing that to help and to, to you know, uh, give these people water, give them power, give them the things that we so enjoy, that it's not an experience you get in the classroom, it's not an experience you would ever get by staying at Claremont.